Someone had asked me if it was possible to use the Microsoft MS-DOS 4 source code release to compile new programs. And that's an interesting question because as I showed in my other video at the time, the BAK, that's the Binary Adaptability Kit, uh, includes a C compiler and an assembler so it can compile the MS-DOS source code. So the short answer is yes, you can absolutely use the Microsoft C compiler they included in that source code release uh, to compile your own programs. Now, the C compiler there is, uh, you know, binary only, there's no source code provided, but it is a working C compiler. So let's look at how you can use the C compiler from the BAK to compile your own programs. Now, this is the virtual machine that I was using in that other video, uh, and uh, it's just a minimal version of FreeDOS with no extra tools, and uh, uh, plus the uh, Microsoft BAK source code release. And you'll notice my uh, my my auto exec is is empty. It's just running the path that was what, what ran up at the top there. Uh, and the four directory is where I uh, copied all the installation from the MS DOS four after compiling it, and so that's what's in sitting inside there. The setenv.bat file is the important thing to look at. And so let's look at setenv.bat. And this is what sets up the environment. So you can use uh, the compiler. It basically sets it up so you can compile the MS-DOS uh, for source code. Uh, the important things in here are it's setting a, a lib directory uh, which is going to be used by the compiler, uh, and include directory, which again will be used by the compiler, and it makes sure that the compiler itself is sitting in the path. Because if I look at, let's go ahead and first run set env, uh, and if I look at my path and look at the source tools directory, source tools, we'll make it a wide directory, uh, you can see these are all the tools that it includes for you, and there's a copy of MASM down there, but also the C compiler is up there too, CL, uh, and that is the uh, Microsoft C compiler, and of course, when you don't give it any <laughs> any file, it's going to give you packed files corrupt. So let's go and look at uh, uh, some source code that we can actually work on. So I've got a, a temp directory here, which is empty, uh, and so let's use Edlin to uh, write a couple of simple um, you know, C programs. Uh, why am I using Edlin? Because it's kind of a neat throwback to using uh, uh, the old MS-DOS source code release. I could happily use uh, the edit program in FreeDOS, but uh, why do that when we have a, a new version of Edlin uh, that just came out a couple of days ago? This is 2.24. Uh, some minor changes to 2.24 as it moves the copyright information to the help screen and the question mark screen, uh, and it has a slightly different uh, message when you uh, exit the program. All right, so let's uh, let's actually edit this with uh, uh, Edlin, and we'll do like a hello world program, so hello.c. And so we can use i to start inserting new lines, and so we're going to do an include uh, standard io.h, and then we've got our main program, which this is just a hello world, so it doesn't need to have any arguments, and we're going to do uh, put s, and it just says hello world and then return back to the operating system, indicating success, and there's the end of our program. And we do period that ends our insert, and now we can use E to uh, save and exit. And yep, we're gonna really exit, and there it is, written seven lines. And so I've now got my hello.c, and we can use the CL command to compile hello.c. And there it is, we've now used the Microsoft C compiler, to compile a new executable, which we can run hello. And there it is, hello world. Uh, we can also do a little more complicated stuff. So we'll do uh, a new uh, program. We'll do Edlin on, uh, let's do a program that just prints out the arguments. So args.c. This is not really any more complicated than what we just did before. I'm just showing a loop. Uh, we'll do include standard io.h. And then we'll do uh, int main, and then uh, it's taking uh, arguments so from the command line. So it needs to do int argc care uh, arg, oops, uh, argv. And we're going to use a variable called i. So we'll do integer variable called i. And then we'll just loop through the command line. So we'll do for uh, i equals um, uh, zero. Actually, we'll do uh, the, the command itself. Uh, and then as long as i is less than the argument count, and then i plus plus, and then we'll just do a put s on, oops, uh, argv i. And that's the end of our loop. And then we'll turn back the operating system. 
and we'll stop inserting and then we'll use E to exit uh, and save our program. All right, and so now I've got args.c and so I'll do a, uh, yeah, and I don't have any, uh, <laughs> I don't have any uh, dir options being in here. So if I look at my set options, I've got nothing on dir commands. So dir uh, OGNE is what you'd probably do to see everything in a nice orderly little alphabetized list. Uh, but that's not what I've got here. I'm just not going to even have that in there. It's just uh, out of sort of DOS order is what I would call it. And so do CL on args.c. And now it's compiled my program and now I can just run uh, args and I can say, uh, hello, uh, this is a test of a program to take command line arguments. And there it is. And so it can process my command line. Uh, and so let's, let's do something that actually uh, uses more than just standard IO. And so um, let's, uh, let's, let's start by copying uh, that args.c and we'll turn it into a uh, something that actually will do uh, argument uh, length. Uh, we'll print out the length of, of each argument and we'll do an edlin on arglen.c. Let's go ahead and print out the entire uh, program here because we need to insert uh, a new line. So we can actually use, I think, A to append um, or we can insert uh, before an existing uh, line. And so let's go back to our uh, our, uh, our line here. And so we'll say uh, to insert into new line, at li insert a new line at line two, and that's going to be uh, include uh, string.h. And that's all I need to do there. And so we'll print out our contents. And then instead of put s argv on line nine, let's go and edit line nine, nine. And then we'll say uh, printf uh, and we'll say uh, the string is of length and then we'll give the length of the string. And then new line, except this is Edlin. So you need to actually say, oh, that's a backslash. So we'll do two backslashes to actually insert a literal backslash. And there's the, uh, oops, I actually probably should put quotes on there. Uh, and then we'll say printf, um, uh, the string is length of that. And there's my new line. And then the string was argv i. And then what is the length of it? It is Sterlin. So we're pulling something that's not in standard IO. We're actually showing that we have a, com a complete compiler and we're going to use string.h. And so we can use Sterlin of argv i. And that's the end of our printf statement. And that's all we have. And so let's go ahead and print out the contents of my program. And so that's the updated program. And so let's go ahead and save and exit. And now we can do CL on arglang.c. And now it's compiled my program. And arglen, uh, this program shows the lengths of strings. And there we go. You can see that's the, uh, the length of each one of my uh, one of my words. And so the word this is four letters. The word program is seven letters. The word shows is five letters and so on. And so we can, you know, this is more than just standard IO. This is also using uh, string.h. Uh, we can also do more than that. We can also do uh, memory allocation. So let's do another program uh, we'll do CLS. And so we'll do a, uh, an Edlin on something that's going to print out an array. And so let's go ahead and, uh, do include uh, standard io.h and we also need to allocate and free memory which is going to be in uh, the uh, standard lib.h and so our program is int main i don't need to take any arguments this time and then i need to have a variable that'll iterate through the array so we'll do an int i and then we need to have an array itself. Let's do an integer array. Just we don't need to do anything fancy. We'll just do an integer array. And so we'll do an int uh, called array, pointer to an array. And so having done that, we can now uh, allocate the, the array memory, oops, memory for the array. And then we'll do array is, we'll do a malloc of what's the size of an int 
times there's 10 of them in that array. And so that's how much memory it's going to allocate for us. And if that value came back as null, then I know that there was an error. And so I can say put s uh, out of memory. And then I can turn back the operating system indicating some sort of a failure. Otherwise, I can go ahead and now store the values in the array. So store values in the array. And then I could do storing and then printing at the same time, but let's let's make two separate for loops just so we can be very clear that we're storing memory at one time and then we're going to print out the values in another loop. And so we'll do a for i equals uh, zero. And then as long as i is less than 10, so it's going to give us zero to nine. And then i plus plus, that's going to increment i by one after every iteration of the loop. And then we're going to store in the array at that element. We'll just store the value itself. And so that is my for loop. And now we've done that. Let's go ahead and print values. Uh, from the array. Again, we could have uh, uh, done this uh, in one uh, loop, um, but this is more clear with two loops. We are saving and then printing. All right, so we do a for loop of i equals zero. Uh, and then as long as i is less than 10, we're going to then at the end of every iteration, uh, add one to the array, and we'll do a printf on the array element at that entry is going to be that value. And then I need to do my double backslash to answer a literal single backslash. And then there's my new line. And then it's going to be i, and then it's going to be the value in the array. So array i. And there's that. All right. And so once we've done that, we're going to then free the memory and quit the program. And so we'll free the array. And then we'll turn back the operating system. And that is the program that I've written. And so that is uh ending my insert there and so we'll just uh, look at 1p and you can see that that's what we've got for our program there and then we can look at uh, 23p uh, to see the rest of the program and so that's the contents of the program we'll go ahead and use e to write and quit and let's now do uh, cl to co compile array dot c there we go no errors and so that's good and now we have a program called array.exe which will uh, run through the oh i got null pointer assignment oh that's interesting what did i do wrong um oh well so let's do edlin on array.c so somewhere in there i at the end of the program i did a, a null pointer assignment and so let's look through my listing and if array oh i've assigned null up there on line 13. ah there's a typo and so let's edit line 13. uh if array is double equals to compare no there we go and so that is uh 1p there we can see there's the rest of my program now i've now fixed line 13. and so uh and then of course line 23 onwards looks like that and so now if i can now save that and now I can do CL on array.c, and that is a now a new program, which I run array, and it's running correctly. So yeah, this is generating a uh, you know uh, real programs, and it's it's uh, it's catching errors. Uh, so it's it's doing all the work of a regular C compiler. So this is exactly what's provided inside uh, the BAK. Uh, if you wanted to, you could create. Uh, sort of your own copy of the BAK. And so let's go back here, uh, your, your own copy of the C compiler from the BAK. And so let's make a new directory. And so we'll make a directory called CC. And if we look at the path again, or uh, the environment that we set up earlier, we need a directory for the libraries. We need a directory for the include, and we also need a bin. So let's go to the CC and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do a, uh, a maker of bin. And we'll do a maker of lib and we'll do a maker of ink. 
And so if you wanted to build sort of your own copy of the compiler and not have the actual source code, uh, you could do a, uh, now if I look at the uh, C source uh, tools, uh, that's where the, uh, the, the path has been set uh, and do wide. There's no directories under there. Oh, actually there is, there's a BLD directory, uh, but I don't think there's anything in the BLD directory that I actually need as a, as a program. Uh, yeah. And because that's, that's the actual path to some other stuff. Right. And so if I look at the, uh, uh the, the, the library, uh, directory, uh, the lib, uh, that's under source tools, BLD, and then lib, and then, uh, the include is source tools, BLD Inc. And so if I look at, uh, dir on source tools, BLD lib wide, uh, no subdirectory is there and then do a dir slash wide on source tools, BLD, uh, Inc. And this would be the include directory and no subdirectory is there. And so if I wanted to, I could copy, uh, from source tools, those programs into my bin directory to basically make my own version of a copy of the C compiler. And so now my bin directory looks like that. All I did is just literally copied everything over. And then if I wanted to, uh, again, look at my environment, if I wanted to copy everything from the lib directory into my lib, uh, directory that I've copied locally, and there's copying all of that. And now if I want to, uh, uh, copy everything from the include star dot star into my ink directory. There we go. I've got that. And so now if I go back to my set and if I were to, uh, unset, uh, the lib and set the, the new lib directory set lib equals C colon and then CC, uh, lib, and then we'll do set include. Uh, to be C, 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 uh, ink. And then the path we also need to set. And so we need to do path of C, C, C bin, and then C, uh, Fridas bin. And that's all that I need to compile, uh, programs. I don't need the other stuff. And so we can actually, if we need to, uh, we can just set a knit uh, to, uh, nothing value. And, uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's all we need to do to, uh, now set a environment that we need to compile programs. Let's go back to our, uh, temp directory and we'll delete all of the OPJ files and we'll delete all of the exe files. And now we're left with, oh, we'll delete our back files. And then now we're left with our, uh, just our C files. And so now we can do, uh, again, using, uh, the new C compiler that we just sort of copied out of the BAK, uh, and this environment where we have importantly, the lib directory and the include directory, we can now do CL array dot C. And now we have built a new array program that works exactly the same. So, uh, it's kind of a long version to say, absolutely. Yes, you can, uh, copy the Microsoft C compiler that's included in the BAK and sort of make your own C compiler, your own copy of the C compiler. If that's something you want to do again, it's binary only, there's no source code provided, but it is a working, uh, compiler. So what do you think about this video? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level. And I want to thank you, especially here for that. Uh, visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Macedon and consider supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget to like, and subscribe. Thank you.